Hello, my friends. This morning the post office called me and said that my bees are up in Erie and uh, they should be delivered to me sometime in the afternoon. And I'll have to go to the local post office and pick them up. And uh, so I'm prepping the bee yard and uh, I'll be installing the bees. Here I'm prepping the board that's going to hold the solar charger that's going to electrify the fence. I'm using pipe straps to hold the board to the T-post and I'm screwing one end of the strap in and then hammering and bending the strap to conform to the post. Because the post has uh, small uh, bumps on it, it keeps the board from sliding down. I had a couple bluebird boxes, um, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to use the uh, corner post to hold my bluebird boxes. These are the two hives that I'm going to install the three pond package of bees. The installation of these is pretty straightforward. You just shake the bees into the boxes and close them up. The uh, top bar hives, I'm not familiar with how they're going to work. Um, I got some ideas, but I'll have plenty of time to work on that. Uh, before the, these bees are large enough um, and established that I could separate them. Right now I'm inspecting the frames in the hive and some of the frames uh, were damaged when the bee bears got into them. And I think only one bear, but it was a pretty big one, about a 350 pounder. So uh, some are being discarded and I'm filling up the hive with uh, additional frames that I had at home. You may have noticed that I installed a couple of the frames that only had uh, partial comb extending down, like this one that I'm putting in right now. Uh, I leveled the hive so that uh, when the bees are building their comb, the comb should go straight down and join the very bottom of that particular frame. You'll notice some of the frames didn't have any comb or foundation in it. I'm not going to be using these frames. I'm just uh, checking the spacing. I have uh, combs that I saved that still have honey and foundation on them, and I'm going to install that instead of the empty frames. The entrance to both of the hives should be blocked for about 24 hours. I have sticks cut that allow me to put the exterior feeders uh, in the open slot. Not that they are needed, but uh, I have them, so we're just going to use, use these. They'll only be on there a few days anyway. The sugar that I use with the syrup mix, I make sure that it's uh, cane sugar and a non-GMO. Or I don't know if the sugar is GMO. If it's beet, it may be. But I don't want uh, 
Roundup being used. Uh, I don't know what effect that will have on the bees. We just got to try to keep them clean. And uh, the cane sugar and being organic uh, should be the way to go. The sugar syrup that I'm using is about a one to one ratio sugar to water. Um, I know some people smoke their bees. I don't like doing that. I think it's an irritating thing to them. Um, I think you get better results from giving them candy than smoking them out. So the uh, sugar on there, I'm only lightly misting them anyway. Um, they uh, get that on there and they lick themselves clean and uh, it makes them real uh, timid, real docile, so it's much easier to work with. When I went into town to pick the bees up at the post office, uh, I live in a pretty small town, so the uh, when you go into the post office, Rarely do you ever see even two workers there. When I arrived, the office was filled with workers. I'd never seen so many workers before. And uh, I guess they were waiting for me to show up. And they said, are you here for the bees? And I said, yeah. And they said, well, you have to go around the back to the loaning dock. They're sitting out there. Um, all the employees are up here up front. They don't want to be back there because the bees are flying all around. So um, anytime I ever had a package of bees, there was always some bees loose. And I don't know if they were strangers that just showed up, but I think they just uh, get out of the bee, bee boxes there. And uh, there's always some little way that they somebody can escape. So anyway, um, they were just glad that I came there and picked them up when I did. These covers that I'm removing, th these are holding the uh, opening for the feeder can and where the queen bee is suspended. Uh, they have them on really tight. I was actually ripping those pieces of plywood apart trying to get them off of there. Um, I was tempted to kind of do a little uh, hitting with that tool, but uh, you know, you don't need to be hitting those bee boxes any more than what you have to. There you can see the top of the cans. They have to be uh, pulled out. And when you withdraw them, you want to do it very slowly because bees will be clinging onto those cans. And you don't really want to be crushing any more bees than what you have to. I'm going to install the first package into this hive. First thing I need to do is to remove some of the frames to make room to shake the bees down into the box. When you use a misting bottle with the sugar syrup, make sure you don't uh, wet your bees down too much. Just uh, very lightly should be all that's needed.
I tap the container to knock the bees down to the bottom of the box and that is going to hopefully knock a bunch off of the can and allow me to remove the can without them clinging onto it. The queen cage is stapled with a strap to the top of the box. I'm trying to remove the staple out of this strap so I can extract the queen cage. There's a mass of bees around the queen cage and those bees are tending the queen through its wire screen. Uh, they feed the queen when she's in there. Whoops. Most of the bees were out of that box anyway. Uh, you need to hold on to the box a little better than what I did. And it's kind of awkward, you know. I don't, don't want to be tapping hard onto the beehive box itself. I just put the sh shook the bees down into the bottom of the box. I don't think you can ever get all of the bees out of this uh, shipping box. So, but there's probably seven or eight thousand bees into a three-pound package. So, do we got 50 or so left in there? Uh, I think that was good enough. Now we have to put the queen cage into the box. I'm going to place the queen cage between these two frames. Both of those frames have foundation with comb already started. Before you put that queen cage in, make sure you remove the cork that's uh, blocking the uh, sugar uh, plug so that the bees can uh, eat that sugar and remove the queen out of the cage. Be a little more gentle with the queen than I just was. I shouldn't be shaking that uh, queen cage up. The queen's in there and that's the one you got to really be uh, gentle and careful with. There's a wire screen that you can view the queen in, the, in that cage. Make sure when you're installing it that screen is not up against your foundation or else you'll be suffocating your queen. You, you want the queen to be, have access to her workers so that they can feed her while she's in that cage. If you squeeze that side up against the foundation she's going to be trapped in there. Now this last frame will be unusually tight and I'm being real gentle because there's a carpet of bees underneath so I want to push that down real slow to let the bees get out from underneath it. 
but it's also snug because that queen cage is uh, taking up an unusual amount of gap in uh, those two frames that she's between. Here I'm placing the feeder can on the inner lid and then an empty super over top and then that will be covered and that should be buttoning up that particular hive. That first hive was practiced. The second hive should go a lot smoother than the first one, but you never know. This feeder can was unusually deep inside and I couldn't get the edge of my tool on the rim of that can. So it's going to give me a little bit of a headache here and it's going to take a lot more time to remove that can than I did with the first one. So I'm going to have to dig out my Swiss Army knife. Sometimes the queen cage will fall inside the box like this one does. You just have to reach in and retrieve it. I'm going to keep a tighter grip on this box. I don't want to drop this one like I did with the last box. When you're shaking the bees out of this box, you have to kind of teeter-totter the box. Shake it one way and some of the bees fall out and some bees cross over the hole to the other side. You just have to keep going back and forth until you can get about as many out as that you can. Bees are landing on me. I just don't like bees on my bare feet. So I brush them off when they get on my feet.
some of the queen cages have a plug on both ends. Make sure that when you remove the plug, you're removing the right end. Right here, I'm about ready to dig out the wrong plug. That wouldn't do it. That side has the candy coating uh, right behind that plug. That's the one that the bees will eat out, and in the time it takes, they will get pretty familiar with that queen and hopefully just accept her as their queen. You can see here I'm trying to squeeze that cage between two of the frames and both of those frames have foundation and that foundation should be enough that it will keep that cage suspended especially when you put the tenth frame in it will squeeze it really tight. I've lost my inner lid, so I'm going to assemble this without an inner lid. Right here is one of my feeder jars. I'm going to install that in the uh, opening of both of the um, beehives. All the hives aren't always a standard size. Right here you see that there's a difference in height on that entranceway and the standard feeder box was too tall, too large. I placed the empty super on top of the hive without the inner lid. Uh, here I'm shaking whatever remaining bees that I had into the hive. Uh, when I go to uh, put the lid on, I see that my inner lid is glued into the lid and I had to pry it loose. So now I'm going to install the inner lid the way you're supposed to. If you look close at that inner lid, you can see that I just installed it upside down. There's an escape hole leading from the bottom super to the outside uh, through that inner lid. And that's a mistake that I did and that I've got away with it. There's the two package bees installed. The uh, sugar bottles on the uh, front of the hives probably aren't necessary because I put honeycomb inside plus the sugar can that they were shipped with. So tomorrow I'll come and open up the hive. Those bees that are flying around are going to be lost because they don't have an access into the hive. So, uh, the bee yard here, um, I got it together this morning in preparation. Uh, we have a bear that's been coming around. They were here last week and knocked my two hives over, the ones that I just filled in. Uh, of course, they were empty. I'm sure they were just smelling the old honey that could have been there in the, some of the frames that were in it. 
Uh, so I have to have it electrified and that's what I did there and then I put in a couple bluebird boxes. Uh, State Game Commission provides these uh, every year. They'll give you a box to put in. The um, mistake I did today was I scraped one of the frames uh, cleaning it here, which I shouldn't have done because uh, that could have coaxed uh, the bear in, but he's going to smell the hives anyway, so it probably doesn't make any difference. Uh, once these hives get pretty well established, then I'm going to try to split and put the hives, split the hives and put them into these top bar hives and see how they will do. Okay, I'll clean up here and uh, tomorrow we'll take a look and just see um, how they're settling in. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.